Hey, what's up? I'm Enrique from Electron, and today let's explore the different machines on Digitac that come with the 1.5 upgrade. Also, if you're looking for info on a specific machine, feel free to use the chapters in the timeline below. All right, similar to how Syntact gives you machines for different synth engines, Digitac gives you different machines for your sample playback and your sample manipulation. We'll start with Slice. Press function plus source to take you to the machine selection page. Here we'll scroll down to Slice and press the Yes key. Slice will take whatever sample we have loaded in this track and apply a slice grid between the start and the end point of our sample. We choose how many slices we'll have by adjusting the grid parameter. We can choose from 4, 8, 16, 32, or 64 slices. To play these slices, we'll go into chromatic mode by holding down function plus track. Now we play the slices using the trig keys. While evenly placing the slice grid between the start and the end point of our sample, the slice machine will also auto-align each slice to the nearest zero crossing points of our sample to help reduce any pops or clicks. The length parameter sets the number of slices that will play in succession when a trig key is pressed. This also depends on how your amp page parameters are set up. When the slice parameter is set to note, we can play all the slices within our slice grid. Or if we hear a slice we really like, we can specifically choose that slice using the slice knob and play that specific slice chromatically across the trig keys. Another fun feature on the slice page are linear and random locks. Let's say we have an eighth note pattern kind of like this. If we press yes while on the source page, we can create linear locks. This will take the pattern we have and assign slices to each activated step sequentially starting from slice one. Now, if we wanted to experiment a bit more, we can use random locks. And yes, you guessed it, it will do the same as linear locks except randomly assign slices to the activated steps. Taking it one step further, let's try and use a different trigger pattern. So we'll do, uh, sure, let's randomize that. Maybe one more time. And if it's almost there, we can preview steps by holding down the step and pressing yes. And then copy pasting those around. So we'll take this one, put it here. All right, maybe I we'll want the kicks there. Pitch it down. Reverb. Now let's check out repitch. Focusing on track eight, I have my drum loop, but as you can hear, it doesn't really align well with my tempo. So we'll hit function and the source page, go down to repitch and press yes. Now, if we play this back again, you'll hear that the pitch has been moved. This is because Digitac will use the perfect pitch for our loop and calculate it to play back and match the tempo of our pattern. We can hear the change in real time as well. This is dependent on a few things. The start point of our sample, the end point of our sample, as well as the bar length setting of our sample. The bar length parameter will take the start and the end point that we have set and make sure that that sample will play back for that many bars across our current pattern. Now let's get weird. We'll set some triggerless triggers by holding down function and adding some steps. What these will do is allow us to parameter lock values in the middle of our pattern without re-triggering the sample. So I can set step five to one bar. We'll go to four bars here, and then I'll set this back to two bars, but with a new start point. Now let's hear this back. Now, the warp machine. This machine on Digitact is close to what you would expect from warping your samples, but a little different. It works great with percussive loops, for example, the one I have here on track eight, which you can hear doesn't really fit with my tempo, but if we go to function source, select warp. Now it's aligned with the tempo and the pitch hasn't changed. 
Inside the warp machine, we can adjust the segment time, which is how often the Digitact will grab a new segment of audio, the mode parameter, which changes how the sample plays within the current segment. For example, we can move forward through the sample while each segment plays in reverse. We also have reverse loop, forward loop, and forward. Now, the bars setting is telling Digitact how many bars we want our sample to play across. Adjusting this also changes the feel of our segments. For example, if we set bars to 1 and change our segment time, the distance our playhead travels from beginning to end is the same, but how many segments Digitact plays between that time changes. Let's not stop at percussive elements, right? Try this with any sample and see what new sounds pop out. On track 7, I have a vocal sample. Now, let's see where Warp takes us. Lastly, we have the one-shot mode. This is the classic Digitac sample playback machine. Here, we can adjust our tuning from five octaves down to two octaves up. We can also choose our play direction, as well as looping, our bit rate reduction, start and end points, and one of my favorite things to mess with, the loop position, which sets where in the sample the playback will loop after reaching the end position. Check this out. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you want to learn more about Digitac, check the links down in the description below or check out either of these videos here or here to learn more. Peace.